So your friend or partner or relative likes board games and you think, I'll buy them a board game for Christmas. What a terrible idea. Don't risk getting hit with the, oh thanks, you got me Catan. And just sidestep the whole problem by buying them something else. In this video, I've got 11 gift ideas for board gamers that are way better than getting them a game they don't want. And I've put links to where you can buy them in the description below. And since you're in the gift giving mood, what I would like for Christmas this year is for you to subscribe to my channel. I'm almost at 100,000 subscribers and I'd love to reach it before the end of the year. After a long hard day at work, looking at board games on their phone, board gamers need to sit back relax, and read about them some more in a magazine. And the absolute best option for that is Senate. They call it a magazine, but that conjures thoughts of rustling paper and glossy print. Senate is so much more than that. It's a publication, with its thick matte pages that feel nicer than a Stonemaier Games rulebook. And it's a thing of beauty. It's got such a striking, sophisticated aesthetic you feel classier just holding it. Other board game magazines are like comic books for greasy teenagers, whereas Senate is a graphic novel for adults who wear fine woolen jumpers. And not just in the way it looks, they have proper articles on interesting topics, such as this feature on trick-taking games by Dan Thoreau, or this feature about games with political themes by Matt Thrower, or these interviews with incredible designers like Reiner Knizia and Matt Leacock. It's really nice to read thoughtful writing about your hobby that goes deeper than what you usually encounter on the internet. And in case you're wondering what the name means, it's because when you order it, right, they send it you in the post. My favorite gaming present to receive these days is good snacks. Last Christmas, we came home from my in-laws with a crate full of snacks so big that it lasted me for three months of game nights. And it's such a safe bet. If they gamble on buying me a game, the chances of them getting me something I'd like is next to zero. But if they buy me a bag of deep fried carbohydrates, their success rate is 99%, allowing for the existence of wasabi peas, which I won't not eat, but I won't not dislike. It's such a joy to receive snacks as a gift because they're always better than what you'd buy yourself. Like if I was planning a game night, I might, grab some Doritos or whatever's cheap, but you can't buy someone Doritos for Christmas. You have to buy them artisanal Serrano chili and Yucatan honey tortilla chips because it's a special occasion, which by the way, are delicious and shaped like a hexagon, which is a gamer's favorite polygon. Although only gamers have a favorite polygon. This was my haul from last year. To be honest, some of the snacks were so premium that I had to withhold them from game nights because I couldn't bear the thought of sharing them. But it's so nice having exciting snacks to enjoy every game night. It really puts a spring in your step. I have to be careful not to let it rose tint my reviewing brain and put D-Day Monopoly in a top 10 just because I paired it with a charcuterie board. You don't need my help picking snacks, but if you're ever buying for me, I want a bar of Tony's Chocolate Only, Bella Zoo make these rose harissa spice nuts, which are insane, and I'll take some artisanal nachos, maybe some snacking chorizo. I really love this idea and I'm positively forlorn that no one has done this for me. Give them the gift of a perfect game day. I got this idea from someone on my Discord whose partner organized them a surprise game day for their birthday, invited all of their friends, even scheduled arrival times to fit around different games and got them to read the rules for Fury of Dracula ahead of time so that he could finally play it. That is better than any kind of sex. By far the worst thing about being a board gamer is having to organize game nights. You'll have had a game on your shelf for years and you only know three people who will play it. And one works night shifts, another is always wasting their time rock climbing when they got a perfectly good ladder, and the third keeps emigrating just to look cool. Finding the one weekend that they're all available is impossible. So the thought of someone taking that stress off of my plate and putting some artisanal nachos onto it is the greatest gift imaginable. And it doesn't have to cost anything. If you can get a good group of people in the same room on the same day, that is a brilliant gift. And you've proven yourself capable of running a country. An easy present for a lot of board gamers is to buy them a premium membership to Board Game Arena. 
Board Game Arena is a website where you can play loads of modern board games against other players. It has hundreds of popular games like Azul, Wingspan, and Carcassonne. And it's actually free to play games on there, but certain games can only be started by premium members. Like Heat, Pedal to the Metal, which has just been added to the library. You can play it for free by joining a stranger's game, but if you want to play it with your friends, one of you needs to be a premium member. So it's kind of like YouTube Premium. You still get the same content for free, but if you're willing to pay, then you get a better experience and some good karma by giving back to the creators. Don't buy a BGA subscription for someone who doesn't already use the site. It's a lifestyle that some live and others don't. A lot of people would balk at the idea of playing a game online without the social interaction, cardboard fondling, and scented candles that we usually insist on. I used to turn my nose up at it, but now I play BGA every day on my phone, taking my turns in the quiet moments when I would otherwise be making myself angry scrolling through Twitter. Now I make myself angry by losing Memoir 44 to my buddy Pankaj, although statistically he gets angry more often. In fact, don't just give them a subscription, set up an account for yourself and play with them. Invite them to some games. You can play them turn-based, so you just dip in and out when you have the time. It's a really nice way to keep in touch with someone. You might not always have something worth putting into a text message, but just knowing that you've taken your turn is a signal that you're there, a candle in the window of your friendship. It will never replace gaming in person, but since you can't host a game night in the toilets at work, it has its own benefits. For me, it's almost like a different hobby, like skateboarding when there's no snow to hit the slopes. And there are some games I would only play on BGA, like Potion Explosion, which has too much downtime in real life, but really suits the turn-based experience where you can take time to really think through your turns. And I got rid of Memoir 44 in real life because there's too much luck for all that setup and admin. But online, I've played it 50 times because it does it all for you. It's also a really good way to try out new games before you buy them. Playing it on BGA is how I fell in love with Sea Salt and Paper. And in the last month, they've added hot new games like Sky Team, Forest Shuffle, and Nah. Some publishers are seeing how useful it is to get people playing and talking about their games. And it's reassuring that they're willing to let the gameplay speak for itself. It costs £33 for a year, which works out to 10 pence a day. There's a good chance if your friend is a BGA regular that they already have a subscription, but your gift can just add on to their account so they don't have to pay for it next year. I've owned every single type of board game accessory. A lot of them are a waste of money, but the ones I use all the time are my token trays. Anytime I bring out a game with a lot of little tokens, I bring these out to store them neatly on the table. Each token in their own compartment, they must never mix. We're serving crudités, not salad. I'm not a particularly fastidious man. I will keep my navy blue socks in the same drawer as my dark gray socks and to hell with the consequences. But I take a certain pride over my table. If someone saw that my tokens were in disarray, they might realize that I'm from a broken home and that I failed my cycling proficiency test. You want a tray with a low wall for easy access and good visibility. Etsy has some nice looking wooden options that should make good gifts. I'll put links to them below, but I can't vouch for them because I haven't tried them. These ones from Thailand made from walnut look beautiful, and you can choose the color of faux leather or leather interior. It's like you're buying a BMW. And you are, bloody marvelous woodwork. For something simpler, there's these wooden ones from Germany, and these nesting bowls from the States come in multiple different types of wood. Just remember, with handmade stuff on Etsy, you need to get in early before the Christmas rush because they often make them to order. Another option are these token keeps from Gamegenic. They've been designed to take tokens out and about because they come with a magnetic lid, but they're a good size to use on the table and come in a bunch of colors. These blue and gray ones have a nice denim-like texture to them. Though I do wish they hadn't put their brand name all over them. You're not Nike. I think most gamers would find a use for a token tray, but you meet the occasional person who just likes to throw it all back in the box at the end of a game. No baggies, nothing. Those people won't appreciate any attempts to instill order at their table, but I also think they're aliens who have been sent to Earth to torment us, so it doesn't really matter. An absolute classic gift to buy someone who likes a thing is a book about the thing. Happy Christmas. I know you love chocolate, so here's a book about the history of it. Every gamer has got a void to fill, that 
everlasting darkness between game nights. And what better way to fill it than to learn more about your hobby, so that when the next game night comes around, you can rain down on your opponents with interesting tidbits. Which is of course how a geek wins a social interaction. Like did you know that winning the Spiel de Jahres guarantees a game will sell more copies than a book that wins the Pulitzer Prize? Which is something that I learned from the book Everybody Wins, that takes a look at every game that has won the German Game of the Year award since it began in 1978. And I can tell you that its first ceremony was hosted in Essen because it was the home to the German Minister for Family Affairs. And now thousands of people from all around the world travel there every year for Spieltag because of it. I mean, couldn't she have lived somewhere nicer like Munich or Heidelberg or Barbados? As someone who only got heavily into board games in 2011, I find it particularly interesting to learn about what led us to where we are now. The Spiel de Jahres was at the heart of that journey, and it was fascinating reading about the competition between Wolfgang Kramer and Klaus Teuber, who between the two of them won the Spiel de Jahres nine times out of 14 from 1986 to 2000. Truly the Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo of board gaming. And for an even wider look at the history of board games, I'd recommend It's All A Game, in which each chapter focuses on a different part of gaming history. I learned that in the 70s, the World Championships of Backgammon were attended by celebrities and playboys with half a million dollars up for grabs. And some of my favourite bits are the little details, like how a Prussian chess master from the 1800s described playing against English players to be a total chore. He said that they repeatedly scan the board and only move after their opponents have sighed a hundred times. Just when I thought the English had contributed nothing to board games, it turns out we gifted the world analysis paralysis. I found both of them to be fascinating to read. If your friend loves to explore older games or learn more about the hobby, and crucially they read books, then either of these would make a great gift. One of the more practical gifts you could get someone is a board game bag. And by practical, I mean ugly. This is my board game bag. I don't like it. I'm deeply ashamed of it, I wish it didn't exist, but boy do I get a lot of use out of it. Every time I have to take more than two games to game night, I have to take this back out of the bin, apologise to it for slagging it off, and let it quietly get on with the job of housing six, count them, six Ticket to Ride size board games. My civilian backpack can't even stomach two of them because the fashion industry hates gamers. This monstrosity can handle Foundations of Rome and two other games. It means I can take more options to game night if we need something for a different play account or in the rare but exciting instance where we play through everything and there's still time left. The only problem is it's really easy to overpack, fill up the bag with just in case games and give yourself a hernia carrying it all. It's also quite nice to lay it down and unzip it, displaying all your options ready to access instead of desperately rummaging through your backpack like a school kid. But when I'm carrying it, I look like a pizza delivery guy. And it insists on telling everyone that there's board games inside, which I'm not ashamed of, but I just rather warm up to that declaration in a longer conversation that allows me to explain why they're actually very cool now. Obviously don't buy them a bag if they play all their games at home, or if they drive to game night, they can just use shopping bags. But even if you go to a convention, a gaming bag is useful to carry from your car to your hotel or your hotel to the gaming halls, especially if you go somewhere like Essen where it rains with great German efficiency. I'd recommend looking for something with two padded shoulder straps. Even with a few games in, it's too heavy and cumbersome to be carried with one arm. And some people use bags designed to carry a cajon drum which might be a cheaper option. And don't go too big, even at this size my bag gets in the way at meetups and conventions. Anything bigger would be really annoying, not to mention impossible to carry if you actually filled it up. The other accessory that I use all the time is a dice tray, a little gated community to throw my dice in. There's nothing more embarrassing than throwing your dice off the table and having to bend down and pick them up. It's like having to retie your shoelaces in public, becoming a temporary statue to your ineptitude. Much better to have the gaming equivalent of Velcro shoes so you never embarrass yourself again. There will be people in the comments saying you can just shake them in your hand and put them on the table, but 
They're the sort of people that eat a burrito with a knife and fork. And everyone knows you're much more likely to roll ones if you don't throw them properly. Etsy is full of handmade wooden dice trays. And these are some of my favorites that I wish I'd bought before making this video, because now I've made this video, I don't have an excuse to justify it to myself. I'm kind of taken by this one that's etched with dwarven runes. It just makes it look more important, like I'm playing with a relic. I just hope those runes don't translate as live, laugh, love. This one from the UK has a nice worn leather look in the tray. And I always like when they have a little dice waiting room outside of the main arena for setting aside dice that you've already used. And you can get it made with some fancy wood so your apartment will smell like rich mahogany. 60% of the time, it rolls sixes all the time. And a lot of them come with the option for custom engraving, like this tasty number from the States. Try not to be offended by the fact that all the promotional images portray them being used by role-playing gamers. Board gamers roll dice too. It's about time those hoodlums respected that. For a more affordable option, you can get one of these felt-lined dice trays on Amazon in the shape of board gamers' favorite polygon. Rest in peace, Klaus Teuber. And Gamegenic make these double-sided dice trays which snap together with strong magnets so they're easy to pack away and take on your travels. Although I think rocking up to game night with a personal dice tray is the sort of extravagant behavior that I'd expect from role-playing gamers, along with their candles and joss stick. One of the most thoughtful gifts you can get someone is a custom accessory for their favorite game. So far, I've only recommended accessories that can be used every game night because you get way more value out of them. But there are loads of accessories made for one specific game. And I would say that 99% of the time, they're not worth owning. But if they love a game and play it all the time, then it could be a really nice gift. There are a crazy amount of options out there. So I'm gonna highlight the types of accessories you can get with examples for each. And I'll put links to all of them in the description. Etsy is home to the more creative examples with loads of 3D printed accessories, some a lot better than others. These cauldrons for Quacks of Quedingburg look amazing. And I love the way they hold the reference cards for that type and come with a lid so that they work as storage in the box. I love the little upgrades you can get that enhance the theme of the game. I got these wooden tokens for Western Legends that replace the boring cubes for the Marshall wanted and point tracks with something more fitting. Another visual upgrade are stickers for your meeples. I found two different sets for the game Obsession, so you can add character to your Victorian toffs in whichever art style you prefer. Though I suspect some purists prefer their meeples to be naked, and we mustn't kink shame. My favorite accessories I own, and the ones I get comments about all the time, are my handmade pandemic figures that I got from Hobold's Grot. He makes some incredible models that are so detailed and beautiful. His sets for Targi and Agricola add so much life to the game, and this grandma for Patchwork is adorable. I wish I could buy them all, but they are on the expensive side. But that's fair enough, because he clearly puts a lot of work into them. Another area Etsy really shines is in bringing niche little components that would never exist otherwise, that make your gaming experience that little bit better. I bought these poker chips for Heat Pedal to the Metal that work as a physical reminder for players that are in last place that they get an extra move and cooldown, something that we neglect to remember in that game all the time. And here's a custom insert for the game Scout to help solve the problem that everyone faces trying to get it back in its own damn box and organizes all its tiny tokens. On the more generous end, there are magnetic player boards for Arkham Horror LCG. Moving away from Etsy before I accidentally spend any more money, the Board Game Geek Store has a range of geek up bits, which are tokens from popular games that have been recreated in a chunkier plastic form. This is my set for Burger Brothers, which I was kindly given by Efka from No Pun Included. And it's particularly handy for this game because the original cardboard tokens are thin and harder to pick up. Metal coins are a very popular option that are increasingly available for every board game ever. These are my metal coins for Libertalia Winds of Galecrest, but you could easily use them with other games as well. And on the larger end of things are neoprene playmats, which are designed to replace your board with a more luxurious, wipe clean, glorified mouse mat. One of the best reasons to get a playmat is when it seamlessly combines the boards that came with later expansions, 
like this playmat I got for Western Legends. One thing to watch out for is their size. I have this playmat for 878 Vikings, which won't fit on my table. And I don't have a small table, at least by European standards. In Texas, it's sold as a footrest. It may seem like a lazy gift to you, but I would love to receive a gift card for my favorite gaming shop. Yes, like any gift card, it delegates the present buying onto the recipient, but in this scenario, you're giving them the gift of browsing a board game shop, one of our favorite pastimes. If you're given an Amazon voucher, it can be stressful trying to decide what to buy from the entire internet. But with games, the decision-making process is part of the fun, and for once, it's entirely guilt-free. With an Amazon voucher, you should probably buy that toilet brush you need. Boring. But with this, there's no pressure to be sensible or hygienic. This is the best gift you can give someone who is new to the hobby and only has a few games because they'll be raring to expand their collection. Whereas it's not such a good gift for someone who has loads of games that they haven't played because then you're just adding to their shelf of shame. If you know that they shop in a certain game store, then go with that one. But try not to get vouchers for a shop with a poor board game selection, which is more likely if they specialize in collectible card games or miniatures games. Online stores are a good backup. I don't personally have a local game store that I like, so I'd rather vouchers for a specialist online retailer. But the greatest gift you can give a board gamer is to play games with them. Most of us already have all the games we could possibly need, but there's not a gamer alive who is overwhelmed with opportunities to play them. A living, breathing opponent who is willing and available is the ultimate board gaming accessory. So just offer them your time. You could schedule a regular game night together or start a legacy campaign and commit to finishing it. Even if you just promise to play that long, complex game that's been sitting on their shelf for far too long, they'll appreciate it. As a gamer, you can sometimes feel like a nuisance always wanting to play games, especially when your partner or friends clearly aren't as obsessed as you are. So for someone else to instigate a game is such a nice change. And it really tells them that you support their hobby. Those are my 11 gift ideas for board gamers that aren't another game. If you want to buy any of them, there are links in the description below. If you like this video, please subscribe to see more videos like it. And to support the channel, become a patron at patreon.com forward slash actualol. I'm John Perkis. Thanks for watching. <laughs>